say praise the Lord everybody anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord on this morning come on make some noise I said is anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord on this morning look at your neighbor and say I got Jesus that's the wrong neighbor look at your other neighbor and ask him say do you have Jesus if you know you got Jesus let me hear you say yeah if you know you got Jesus let me hear you say yeah one more time, if you know you got Jesus, let me hear you say, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh. Clap your hands, right?
So I'm just going to ask you some questions about your dad. I'm a dad too, so. Yeah, I know, because you're a girl and you're a boy. That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Action! 
What is your dad like? He's funny. He's really funny. He's really funny. How is he funny? His dad jokes. You like his dad jokes? No. What are some funny things that your dad does? He claps really hard and, it, and mom doesn't like it. He claps really loud. Yeah, like this. Wow. Wow. What is your dad good at? Working. He's really good at fixing things and building things. He usually goes to the fast food place to get his breakfast. What do you normally eat? Uh, biscuits and waffles. It's a lot of carbs. Is there stuff that he's not very good at? He's not very good at wrestling, yes. Three against one. Yeah. He's not that good at hair. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, I thought you were about to say, was that a song you were singing? Um, no. Oh. What's something he's done you're like, Dad is not very good at that. Jokes. Jokes. <laughs> is your dad pretty strong, dude? Yeah, because he always goes to CrossFit every day. So he's a CrossFit dad. He's like, explode! To do he's that? Like, uh. Do an impersonation of your dad. <sighs> I'm just gonna rest my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that your dad has taught you? Nope. What is it? What does he teach you? Sight words. Sight words. I copy him to do what he does, and yeah, you copy him. I just do stuff to make myself learn from him. What's your favorite thing to do with your dad? Snuggle and talk with stuffed animals. Go fishing. Play wrestle with me. When you get on his back, you like yank us off of him. How does your dad make you feel? Special? Happy. He makes me hungry from his delicious food. He makes sure we're safe. He makes me happy. Yeah, that's what he makes me feel like. Good job, bro. Well, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord have made and I have made a conscious decision to rejoice and be glad. I'm Pastor Vincent J. Chambers, Sr. We are the Wingate Community Church of God founded by Jesus Christ and this is our Father's Day service. I pray that something is said or done that will cause you to grow, to cause you to be impacted, to cause you to be influenced, to, to run on, to, to lift up your head, to believe even the more that God is not a God that he would ever lie to you. If he said he's going to do it, he is going to do it. And that is a promise. I want you to do something for me. Why don't you invite two or three people to the broadcast, two or three people to the worship, just two or three. Just put their name in the comment section. Uh, it would invite them. It would notify them that something is going on and what's going on is going to bless their life. If you would do that for me, I would appreciate it so much. My job, my task, my assignment is to bless as many people that I can while I'm still here on earth. That's a promise that I made to God that I will give myself away so he can use me whatever way he see fit anyway anyhow if you do that for me again i appreciate it thank you again for joining me i pray that something is said or done that will cause you to to just 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 be excited about what your tomorrow is going to bring we're still in the middle of a global pandemic People are still getting sick. I mean, members on my job, my co-workers. I mean, we might have an eight, nine member team and we down to four. People are just getting sick everywhere. But I believe God is a coverer. He's a keeper. He's going to watch over us and he's going to see us through. Amen. Again, thank you for joining me uh, to all the fathers. God bless you and happy Father's Day. 
to all the great men of God, those that have gone on to be with the Lord. Uh, you, you lost your father and, uh, and you're still here to make an impact on generations to come. Uh, bless the Lord for you. Lift up your head. I believe God is going to encourage you today. Uh, this is our day. Uh, I've always been told that the restaurants are packed out on Mother's Day. But then on Father's Day, all we get to do is ride in the drive through the cookout. Ah, the devil is a lie. This is your day, man of God. You should not take out the trash. You ain't going to have to, man, uh, uh, go in the kitchen and cut no vegetables. All you're going to have to do is go and pick up the remote control and sit back. Yes, sir. Just sit back and enjoy your day. For God has blessed us. Amen. He's blessed us. And uh, uh, I woke up this morning and I was up here preparing and getting things straight. And my cash app went off and I looked at it and it was my son. Yeah, that boy sent $75. I went downstairs to tell him thank you. This Negro just woke up, hit the cash app, and went back to sleep. Isn't God good? Y'all ain't saying nothing. God is a way maker. He would bless those that you have been a blessing to to turn around and be a blessing to you. Did you just hear what I said? He will give seed to the sower and bless those that you have been a blessing to and they will turn around and be a blessing to you. And that's how God will see it to be. There are many, many members of my church. I, I am their father in the ministry. I have been a blessing to so many. If you see fit, if God blesses you, why don't you turn around and be a blessing, especially to your dad, to my father, uh, uh, Deacon Linwood Smith. Bless you, man of God. I love you. I love you dearly. I respect you. And I thank God for you. To my Uncle Vernus Thomas, Trustee Thomas, bless you, man of God. I love you and respect you dearly. And to all the men of my church, I love all of you. God bless you. Happy Father's Day. And to my dad, who has gone on to be with the Lord, Mr. McCoy Chambers. He left this earth a couple of years ago. And uh, I tell you, I don't even like to drive to the city of Durham. I don't even like to go to Durham because every time I cross the county line, I think about my dad. I'm telling you, but he's gone on. And um, at the end of his life, this man put everything that he had, everything into my hands and said, you take care of it. I believe in you. And I know you're going to see fit to make sure that I'm taken care of and that your brother and sister, whatever I leave, you will disperse it at your will. And God has been good just like that. And so I want to go on, give you a word to all these men of God. I want y'all to pray for me. Amen. I, you know, when people are going through when uh, Mother's Day and Father's Day and birthdays of their mom, when they're going on and um, I be looking at them, praying for them, you know, and I'll be like, you know, that stuff don't kind of don't bother me. But, you know, today been one of them type of days. Amen. So I'm going to need y'all to pray for the man of God. But I'm going to lift this word up and uh, bless you and release you in Jesus name. Hallelujah. I want you to grab your Bibles real quickly. Grab those Bibles real quickly. Amen. 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 I want to see who's on here. I see my uncle's on here. Trustee Thomas. I see Elder Roland is in the place. Sister Danielle. Sister Sharon Floyd. Uh, Sister Barbara Gray is in here. Sister Glenda. We're still praying for you in your recovery. God is going to see you through. Amen. The Bible says if you give the prophet a drink of war or water, you will receive a prophet's reward. And you have been a blessing to me. You walk into the pulpit, give me my mints, my water. And I pray that God walk into your room and give you everything that you need. Hallelujah. And so we see Sister, uh, Sister Thomas, my auntie is on here. God bless you, woman of God. Uh, thank you so much. Sister Sabrina Huntley, God bless you, woman of God. That's family. We're glad to have you this morning. Amen. I see the first lady is in the place to be this morning. God bless you, honey. I love you so much. Amen. And we're going to have a good time. Grab your Bibles real quickly. I got to lift this word up in your hearing. Amen. All week long, I have been preparing a word for the men of God. 
And uh, as soon as Sunday morning hit and I woke up, I felt in my spirit that God snatched that word that I prepared out of my hand. Just, just snatched the whole paperwork and just, just took it. And I'm looking around and going like, where God go with my, with my sermon? He just done walked off and told me to go back in my spirit and grab a word that I had preached years ago. And I want to bring that word from Joshua chapter one, chapter one, chapter one. Moses is now dead. Hallelujah. Many of your fathers have gone on, but there is a word. There is a word. And we're going to get that word right now. In Joshua chapter one, I want to call your attention to verse one. And I want to see what the spirit of the Lord has to say. Joshua chapter one, it says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses is aid. Moses is dead. That's what he said. He's not here. He's expired. He's gone. Now you and these people are still here. Get ready. I like that translation. Get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I'm about to give them to the Israelites. Uh huh. Verse three said, and I will give every place where your feet walk on. Do you see that? Every place where you set your foot, I promised it to Moses. That's crazy. Every place that you set your foot, I promised it to him. I'm giving it to you, but I promised it to him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Every step you take, every land you walk on, every house you claim, every job you desire, every step you take, I'm giving it to you. But I promised it to him. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Let's talk. My God, I'm giving you every place where your feet walk on and I promised it to Moses, your territory will extend from the desert to the Lebanon and from the great river the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. My God, the Lord is getting ready to give me somebody else land. Y'all ain't see that, did you? Let's look at it again. Every place I'm giving it to you, as I promised to Moses, your territory is going to extend from the desert. You in the desert now, but it's going to go from here Yes, sir. From the desert to the Lebanon. And then it's going to move from the great river of Euphrates all the way through the Hittite country to the sea of the West. My God. And no one, no one. I want you to put that in the comments. <laughs> no one. Woo! Put that in the comment. No one. My God, I'm excited. I'm excited. Do you see those two words right there? No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. Ain't nobody going to stop you because I'm with you. And there will be no one that will be able to rise and stop the move of God that I'm about to put on your life. And then she said, as I was with Moses, so I'm going to be with you. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. As I was with your father, I'm going to be with you. Hallelujah. As I was with your grandmother, I'm going to be with you. As I was with your pastor that uh, sanctioned you to go forth and now they're gone. I want you to keep going. And as I was with them, so shall I be with you. Glory to God. I want to show you something before I move any further. It says, be strong. 
and courageous. What he was saying was be encouraged, be aware, and stay ready. Hallelujah anyhow. I want to talk with your prayers and certainly with the aid of the Holy Spirit just for a few minutes. I want to talk from this thought. The promises are still yea and amen. That's what I need to deal with. The promises. The promises of God. They still on the table. I don't care what you've been through. All you fathers and even you mothers, grandmothers, grandfathers, whoever you are, the promises of God are still yea and amen. Can I get any help in here? I want to read you uh, 3 John 1 and 2. He says, Beloved, all things that you mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. God desires that you have attain it, that you acquire it, that you live in it, walk in it, that you uh, be exposed to it. He wants you to have it. Can I get any help in here? Above everything, above all, above everything, I want you to prosper even as your soul prospers. Can I get any help in here? God does not want you living a life that's below and beneath. He desires that you be above. Can I get any help in here? That you not live a life that is mediocrity, but a life that is exposed to the greatness of God. Can I get any help in here? Y'all gonna pray for me? All right, let's talk. There is a story of an old man who went on vacation. One day he decided to go to the mountains and just get away from everything. Yes, uh, the hustle and bustle of life. He just wanted to go up where there's some peace, where you can walk out on the back porch and see the deer, and they don't even run off when they see you. He went up there, and while up there, he was uh, in his uh, hotel room and uh, heard, overheard uh, some commotion, a loud noise, yeah, a rumbling. Yeah, this man got a fearful, got scared, and uh, came out of his room, went downstairs to the front desk and asked the lady, listen, what in the world is going on? What, what, what is this? What is this rumbling in y'all's building? My God, the lady sensed that the man was full of anxiety. She sensed that the man uh, was full. He was anxious. He was scared. Uh, and she needed to answer his question immediately because his hand was shaking. Yeah, he was startled. Uh huh. He was out of his element in another jurisdiction and had no idea what was going on. The lady said to him, sir, uh, what the situation is, is our hotel uh, sits in the middle of the mountains. Yeah, uh-huh. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it's turned in a way where the mountains are on the east side of the hotel and the sun is on the west side. And when the sun comes up early in the morning, it melts the snow that's on the top of the mountain. Aha! Uh -huh. And the, the snow comes down. Yeah, it rumbles down. And what you're hearing is the rumbling of the snow falling down. It's not an earthquake. <laughs> My God, it's not the end of the world. It's nothing that you should be afraid of. In fact, what's going on is uh, that is a sign that the sun has come up and it's a brand new day. Hallelujah. And I come to tell somebody here this morning that you have been going through a rumbling in your life. You've been hearing sounds that sound like it's going to take you out and take you over. But I come 
somebody tell you that that's the sound of God starting something brand spanking new in your life. Can I get any help in here? So all you got to do is be strong. Uh huh. Uh huh. And be stable minded. Yeah, just settle yourself and let God do what God is doing. Is that all right? Is that a good way to start off a message this morning? Can I get any help in here? Every one of us, my God, every single one of us, none of us are exempt. Every one of us was created for a unique and particular destiny in God. Can I get any help in here? Wherever you are right now, uh huh. It's not the final leg of your journey. It's not the last leg of your life. Wherever you are right now, I want you to tag it temporary. Yes, Lord. Temporary. Can I get any help in here? Now, somebody needs to hear that on this live because you need to know that the stress, my God, uh huh, the strain, the struggle, the challenge, uh huh, the pain, the headache, the heartache, the problem, the setbacks that you're going through. Can I get any help in here? It's only temporary. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You see that our destiny, according to scripture, is to be the head and not the tail. It is to be above and not beneath, lenders and not borrowers. It is our destiny, according to scriptures, that we rule and reign. Uh huh. It is our destiny that we walk in perfect peace and a complete understanding of God. Uh -huh. I'm talking about the uh, understanding that surpasses, uh, uh, yeah, all, yeah, all of your understanding. Y'all help me here. And everything that you go through short of that, I want you to know that it is temper worry. Are y'all praying for me? I think it needs to be stated at the offset of this message that everyone in here on this live has a purpose and your purpose is to show that God God is able to do all but fail. Can I get any help in here? And he can't show the world that he's able to do all but fail except he send you into dark times, dark places, and then pull you out. Can I get any help in here? Yeah, when he pulls you out, then people can see the hand of God on your life. Are y'all praying with me? Now, let me say that every one of here has a destiny, but your destiny is not to preach. No, everybody ain't trying to preach. Everybody ain't trying to get in nobody's pulpit. Everybody ain't trying to put on no suit and be holy. Then that ain't everybody ain't trying to do that. Did you know that? Everybody ain't trying to do that. Some people just want a man be all that God has them to be doing what they do and what they like to do. Can I get any help in here? And Christ can still be seen in whatever they do. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Everybody was not chosen to be the greatest singer. Everybody was not chosen to be the greatest ball player. No, but all of us was chosen to show forth God's power and glory. All of us was not chosen to be rich, popular, uh-huh, full of prestige. Yeah, everybody ain't trying to, man, walk around and have cameras following them around all their life. Some of us just like to, man, be seen under the radar. Can I get any help in here? And the question is not, am I called? But the question is, what am I called to do? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying in here? Because on one side, I don't want God to not get glory out of my life, but I don't want to walk around looking like I'm God. I'm not God. I'm just a man. Can I get any help in here? With God's anointing sprinkled on my life. With that word, hallelujah. I want to give you a couple of principles that I think would help us. Because I don't want to do a whole lot of pulpit preaching. This is online worship. And what I need to do is get every man of God to know that where you are is not where you're going to end up. Can I get any help in here? The Bible says that God came to uh, Joshua and this is what he said to him. Son, your father 
is gone. The one you looked up to, the one that groomed you, supported you, the one that uh, uh, encouraged you, the one that challenged you, he's gone. And what I need you to do is utilize every teaching, everything that he gave you and get up from here. Yes, Lord, you're sitting down crying because they're no longer here. My God, I get it. I know it. I, I know how you feel. I feel the same way. But I have to tell you that you still have an assignment on your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And your assignment is to carry those people over that Jordan. Yes. I hear you saying what people? What people? What people you talking about? <laughs> they ain't with me. I'm by myself. Yes, they are with you. Yes, they are. You have an assignment on your life to impact an entire generation behind you. Yes, Lord. You don't think they're watching you, do you? Every one of them back there is watching you up there to see what you're going to do next. To see how you handle situations. To see what you're going to do, what you're going to say. To see if you're a prayer warrior. Daddy watching you. And you're sitting down like this. And God. And he says to you. Get up. Get up. Get up. You still have something to offer the world. Get up and carry these people across that Jordan. And he says to him, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Isn't that a good news? I'm going to give you every piece of land that you walk on. Hallelujah. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you because I made a promise with your dad. Hallelujah. My God, I didn't make the promise with you. I don't owe you nothing. This, uh, uh, this uh, uh, promise, this contract was made with a generation before you. And I need you to be the one that carries it out. Hallelujah. And I just stopped by to tell you just this morning that the promises are still yay and amen. I don't care how you feel. I don't care who walked away. I don't care who who's not here no more. You still have a promise on your life. And the promise is wherever you go, I'm giving it to you. Woo! I'm going to give you houses that you didn't even build. I'm going to give you land that you didn't even till. I'm going to give you cars that you ain't put no down payment on. It's yours. All I need you to do is be strong and be courageous. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Be strong and be courageous. I got a couple of points that I want to give to you and I got to let you go. Number one, remember this. That nothing that God is going to give you has anything to do with your ability. Nothing. It's all about promise. God doesn't lie. If he promised it to you, he's going to give it to you. I don't care if you know what you're doing with it or not. It's yours. I want to tell you here that Joshua had nothing to do with his calling toward his destiny. His skill and ability did not cause him to be chosen. The only reason that Joshua was chosen and elevated at the time he was is because his dad died. Why you keep saying that's his dad? Joshua, Moses wasn't his dad. I know that in the spirit realm he was. Because anybody that makes impact on your life, anybody that strengthens you, anybody that encourages you. Man, I had people in my neighborhood that would pick us up and take us to baseball practice, football practice when my mom was at work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They were like a dad to us. It takes a village to raise a generation. My God, it's like a dad. 
That boy that's ability didn't have nothing to do with it. All the, he needed was a yes, Lord. <laughs> boy, I got to let this go because God just told me that. Just type that in. All God needs is a yes, Lord, out of you. Yes, Lord. Here I am. Yes, Lord. I'll do it, God. Call me, man. Tell my man, I ain't got, Pastor, I, I, ain't got a, I, I ain't got a couple of dollars. I need a couple of dollars. Man, I don't even question it. These are my sons and daughters. Can I get any help in here? I'm all about making sure that people's lives are impacted in a way where they can go on and be the best version of themselves. Can I get any help in here? Joshua didn't have no ability to carry no millions of people cross no Jordan and they over there complaining talking about what we can't do nigga we don't want you we want our old pastor what is you talking about who, who are you you too young man listen Joshua ain't trying to hear all that he listening to God and God said get up they gonna follow you they watching you if you get up they'll get up if you say yes Lord they'll say yes Lord can I get any help in here my God, that old man went on that vacation and he was fearful because he didn't understand what was going on. But then the lady at the front desk became his pastor for about five minutes. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying? For about five minutes, she told that man to calm down. Can I get any help in here? Calm down, sir. You can go back up to your room and enjoy the rest of your day because what just took place is going to stop in a minute. It's just a sign a signifying that God is doing something and it's a brand new day. <laughs> Ooh, I got to go. I got to go. Pastor, give us one more. Just give us one more. At least one more so we'll know that you preach. All right, here it is. If you're going to keep a date with destiny and do what God has for you to do. You got to be careful that you watch who you are hanging around. It says every place that steps are going, you're going to walk on. I'm going to give it to you. The Lord was saying that everywhere you go, I'm going to cause that place to change for your benefit. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. I don't care if the Hittites are over there, the Jebusites, the Amalekites, the Amorites, the boys of Anak. I don't care who over there. Let them stay over there. They don't know you coming. But guess what? You coming and it's yours. Ooh. Do you, do you, let me say this. You didn't know that it's somebody sitting at a desk right now. Monday morning, they're going to be sitting at a desk with their legs crossed, typing on a thing. Yeah, they, they work there now. But guess what? They ain't going to be working there too much longer because that, that desk is yours. <laughs> You didn't know that. They had it now. They had it now. They got the job now. But the, but the job is yours. They just holding it up right now. It's temple word for them. So where you at is temple word because that's yours. Now go in there and stand up, fix yourself up, and talk your talk, and lock in and get what God has for you. I got to go. I got to go. I can't keep hollering with y'all. My wife downstairs. Hallelujah. Can't keep hollering in this house. Woo! It's yours. My God, it's yours. Can I give you one more? Can I give you one more? And I promise you, I let it go. If you're going to move as God say move and walk in and take over territory like God says, you got to be faithful in your previous and present assignment. If you're going to get a new assignment, if you're going to get a new house, if you're going to get a new job, if you're going to have a great tomorrow, you got to be faithful and accountable in your today. You never know where you're going to be tomorrow. So do what? Behave yourself today. <laughs> Father, we thank you for these, your people. We thank you for your glory and your anointing. We thank you for this word that you selected for your people's hearing. Thank you for allowing me to deliver it. Thank you for this great Father's Day to all these men of God. I pray that this word was a word that encouraged and strengthened. Let them know, God, that where they are is temporary, but you still have promises for their life, and the promises are still yea and amen. Go with us in Jesus' name. And all the people of God, they said amen. 
Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Listen, I got about six, seven pages of notes. And I ain't even read that stuff. All you need to know is that God is on your side. And the promises that he made to you that haven't come to pass yet, what you got to do is remain strong and courageous. Remain encouraged. Remain uh, uh, attentive. Watch who's around you. Watch what you say, what you do. And put your ear to the voice of God. Yes, Lord. Elijah was in a, a famine and, and the voice of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came to his ear and said, go down by the brook. I'm going to sustain and take care of you there. Raven's going to come and feed you. Can't fight with the word of God. You got to get up and move. <laughs> Hallelujah. He went down there. The Ravens came two times a day and fed that boy. And then the, then the brook dried up. It dried up. Everything stopped. Everything got dry and it wasn't moving anymore. But guess what? The word of the Lord came again. Ooh, when I be reading the text and I be reading and then I see things are starting to get bad. And then all of a sudden it has a period. And then the next sentence say, and the word of the Lord came again. Oh my God. Said, now get up from the brook and go down to Zarephath. There's a widow woman down there. She going to take care of you. I want you to know that wherever you are, God knows. Don't stress yourself. Don't ah! stop. Calm down. Get your drink of water. Take a deep breath. And wait on God. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. I love you. I'm Pastor Vincent J. Chambers Sr. We are the Wingate Community Church of God. And again, we thank you for joining us. And the church said, Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, that's been our broadcast, the word of the Lord for the people of God. I pray that it blessed you. I want you to enjoy the rest of this Sunday afternoon. Please fire that grill up. Fired up. Don't play. This is dad's day. Do not play with us. Don't play. We got to go all the way out. If you got to make two, three runs to the grocery store, make the runs. All the, we ain't got enough pickles for the potato salad. Somebody go get some more pickles. I want it to be right. This is our day. Hallelujah. I love you. I want you to go in peace. Now do something for me. I want you to plant a seed into ministry business. Please, ma'am. Please, sir. Whatever you do, do not allow an opportunity to go by without you planting something into kingdom business. I promise you, if you give the prophet, a of you, the Bible says, if you believe on the prophet, so shall you prosper. So shall you prosper. And I want you to know that if you put something in the ground for kingdom business, not too many days from now, it's going to sprout up some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And that is a promise. Our cash app is dollar sign Wingate Community COG dollar sign Wingate Community COG. You cannot beat God in your giving. Try God. Try him. And won't you see, he won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Amen. I love you. I want you to go in peace. The bishop tells me all the time, don't let people, man, not be a blessing to you. Don't let people not be a blessing to you. Don't get to the end of your ministry, to the end of your life, and people don't bless you for what you have been doing to them. If you want to be a blessing to Pastor Vincent J. Chambers Sr. on Father's Day, my cash app is dollar sign VJ. S V J C S R V J C S R. I love you. Go in peace. We'll talk to y'all real, real soon. God bless you.